For the purpose of this video, I've asked Andrew to edit out my arms because Rayman does not have any arms, therefore it's not exactly fair that I do. Plus, now that I don't have any arms, thank you for that by the way, we can now be two peas in a pod. Aw, oh, jeez guys, it looks like your mouse cursor is really tired. Maybe you should let it rest on this conveniently placed bed I just pulled up. And then, after it's had enough time to rest, pretty much like the entire runtime of the video, you can click the subscribe button, the bell icon, the like button, and also maybe even click the card up there to watch my live reaction to today's game. It's up to you. I mean, it could be fun, I don't know. Hello everybody, I'm Garrulous64, and wouldn't you know it, Rayman's actually a pretty good series. I can't believe none of you ever told me that before. Like, what are you trying to do? Keep this funky fella all to yourselves? Come on, sharing is caring. My history with Rayman is actually pretty sparse. I had the original game on PC when I was a little kid, and judging by my playthrough of the game I just did, I most likely did not make it past the first level, because woo-wee, this game. I also got my hands on Rayman 3D back when the 3DS launched because it was the only 3DS launch title that looked like it was worth anything, but maybe I was wrong. I bet Steel Diver was the way to go. Uh, but anyway, that didn't last very long either because I ended up just returning that because I didn't like it. I'm sure that might upset Rayman 2 fans, but you know what? I'm gonna give it another shot soon, so don't worry. But back to Rayman 1, this game's actually incredibly challenging to like an almost absurd degree, and it's not really the most fast-paced 2D platformer around. Not that I need games to be fast, but, you know, this one is just too far in the opposite direction. It also has a lot of stuff that I just really don't like, but that still didn't deter me from going through this entire game, at least in another form. If I can get more specific for a second about things I didn't like before we jump into the remake, I really don't like how they start you off with no abilities whatsoever, and, like, you can't even attack enemies. Like, you're walking through this forest, and the Green Goblin's cousins are just aggressively shimmying at you, and... You just kind of have to jump over them and pretend they're not there. And you can't even grab ledges when the game starts. That's a gift that has to be given to you. I, I mean, <laughs> I can grab a ledge. I'm just a regular person. Ray is a super man. I don't know what Ray is, actually. I mean, what is this? Banjo-Tooie for the Nintendo 64 Entertainment System? He can't grab ledges either at the start of the game. What the hell's up with that? But that's enough about Rayman, it's not like we're talking about Rayman today, because instead we are talking about Rayman 100% Actually Worth Playing Edition, or as I like to call it, Rayman Redemption. We live in an era of remakes and reboots, but for some reason Rayman's creators Ubisoft are only concerned with re-releasing Rayman Legends on every single platform known to man. So that is where the fans step in, of course, keeping the games that they hold dear alive. Rayman Redemption is a second chance for a game that is generally dismissed as either being too hard or not as good as its sequel. But I don't think that's really fair considering most people say Rayman 2 is the best thing since sliced bread. I haven't experienced that for myself yet, but maybe I will. But thanks to the efforts of the fan game creator Raimani, Rayman 1 now stands more than a chance at challenging its sequel. That actually wasn't a complete sentence in the script, my bad. This is actually kind of how I feel about Crash 1, because the original game is a miserable experience that I don't think anybody should really have to experience. But then you jump over to the Crash 1 remake, and all of a sudden, it's this incredibly rewarding experience because, hey, look at that! They actually made the difficulty realistic instead of a difficulty that makes you want to just wish your Crash 1 disc would stop being readable for some reason. In my opinion, Rayman Redemption is one of those fan remakes that transcends the original. My biggest complaint with the original Rayman is that it is way too stinking difficult to the point where it feels like an old arcade game, almost like it's supposed to be stealing quarters from you every time you die. But instead, it's just a game that you play on your console, and it's almost a gamble as to whether or not you'll actually see the end of it. Since game overs are still a thing, and oh boy do those happen, you're gonna have to spend your time going back through the levels you've already played to try and get back to the part that you died at. And some might call that improving, but I call that wasting time. I'm not adverse to challenge, but it really doesn't make any sense to have me redo stuff that I already proved I could do when I should be going to practice the thing that killed me over and over again. But instead, I gotta keep doing the whole thing over and over again, and it's just like, who's happy here? Not me. Rayman Redemption offers a ton of difficulty tweaks that don't make the game easy, believe me, it is not easy, but it also adds basically what I would like to call a human challenge. In addition to that human challenge, we also have a classic mode for people who like live systems, and then a casual mode 
for people who actually want to enjoy the game. By throwing out the live system, you're able to respawn infinitely at checkpoints to actually keep trying the things that killed you, which means once I finally complete this objective that's been holding me back, I actually feel good as opposed to, uh, you know, wasting four hours of my life trying to do one thing that doesn't need to take that long. Another handy feature that Redemption has in store is you get your full move pool right off the bat. So instead of waiting for Batilla to like, feel like giving you the ability to punch, my man Ray over there is just busting lips right from the start of the game. There's also a run button now, which dramatically increases the pace of the game, but if you use it too much in the wrong areas, you're gonna get yourself hurt. So look at that, there's rewards and repercussions for doing certain things. You see, it's kind of like Sonic the Hedgehog, where you go fast and that's the reward, but if you're not careful, you get hurt. And that's the only similarity between these two franchises, because Rayman's actually good. Now out of a job, Batilla now just waits in her glade, awaiting for you to rescue the Electunes, which are the game's main collectible. In Redemption, once you collect a certain amount of cages, you can go back to see her and she will permanently increase your health by one point. If you've never played this game before, let me tell you, you're gonna want that health upgrade because while there might be a bunch of health pickups in the levels now, once you get to the boss stages, these guys are gonna be kicking you all over the place like a soccer ball. You're gonna be biting the dust so many times you'd think you're eating at a dust buffet. Please click the like button if you would eat at the dust buffet. This is a social experiment. Rayman 1 takes our hero across several environments ranging from realistic world locations to Shark Boy and Lava Girl. The game goes for a very cartoony aesthetic and honestly, I dig it a lot. I think one thing that didn't need to be changed about this game at all was the presentation and I'd go as far as to argue that I think I like how this looks more than the newer 2D Rayman games, but I'm also not saying that the UB art games look better bad because they are also gorgeous. Now I'm not going to talk about every stage individually here because whenever you see a level marker on this map that actually houses a lot of smaller levels inside each stage. So basically every level in a world has a lot of different sections that sort of blend together so it's a lot easier to just talk about the worlds as a whole. Our first world, the Dream Forest, is where you're going to get used to everything and one thing I might have to bring up is that I'm not sure if making it easy is a good idea or not, because it doesn't really set up for that difficulty curve very well. Like once you hit band land, it's like zero to 60. It's here we also find our first temporary power up in the form of the little beans or seeds or whatever these are. They're given to us by Tar Raisin so we can escape the flood. And I just really hope that Tar Raisin also survived because there aren't a lot of Ray people around here. Uh, and I'm not sure why that is. And I think later in the series, they're just none, it's just Rayman, so. Uh, make Tar Raisin cannon, please. The Dream Forest is also where Redemption's shop is found, where Rayman can spend the tings he finds in levels to find new power-ups and skins for himself and his new friend Buzzit, who he mercilessly assaults when he finds him at the end of this world. But it's okay, they're friends now, and he's gonna spit on every single enemy we tell him to, and I'm now just realizing that that's bio-warfare and Rayman is a war criminal. But you know, it's not like stealing the great protune from everyone and plunging the world into chaos is a very noble thing either, Mr. Dark. I think maybe your days are numbered. We're gonna spit on you. Immediately next to the Dream Forest is Bandland, a land composed entirely of musical instruments, and they are freaking pissed, dude. I mean, look at these Banjo-Kazooie eyes shooting lightning at me. Are they mad because I made a Banjo-Tooie joke earlier? Like, I'm sorry. I think. This is where the difficulty curve starts ramping up and it ramps up fast. And speaking of fast, there's a lot of high speed platforming down these little like ramps and over these fiendish music notes and man, I haven't felt this threatened by music since my brother changed all my car's preset radio channels to country stations. Every song is exactly the same. I thought I was stuck in like a Groundhog Day loop or something. It's here where a gimmick I'm not a very big fan of starts appearing and emphasis on appearing because this game has these little almost invisible triggers that spawn other platforms and things to show up so you can actually continue on on the stage. For real, like you're just walking around these levels and maybe you're completely stuck, you have no idea where to go, and then all of a sudden you'll hear a little sound effect and a magic trumpet will show up and pat you on the back for walking that direction, and then you can keep going. Didn't really feel a rewarding ever to find these things because it was mainly like, oh, I'm hitting a dead end, but no, there's, there's a platform there and I can keep going, and whatever, just leave the platform there. I'd rather just keep going. That is one thing I certainly will not miss when I eventually play the sequel, but you know, one thing I will miss is Bandland itself, because I think it's one of the best stages in this game. I just think this stage is very nice to look at, very good on the ears, my god, that song, oh god, I wish I could use it more than once in a video. And I mean, I guess it makes sense that it has the best music in the entire game, because if it didn't, that would be, that'd be kind of ironic, huh? The boss here is Mr. Sax, an overgrown saxophone who apparently is a huge fan of bullet hell games. This is actually the first place in the game where my adventure actually was put on hold for a bit because it took me like 10-15 minutes to actually get by this boss. 
But again, not having lives makes this a lot more fun because, uh, you know, I really don't want to trek through the entire game to get back to this point. You don't have to restart the entire game. I don't know why I said that. I'm just really tired. Moving on to the next stage, Blue Mountain. If there was one thing that I was consistently bad at the entire game that wasn't simply procrastinating and scrolling through Twitter while I'm trying to play the game, was dodging these exploding lava rocks. You see, what would happen is these things would come up on screen, they would explode into multiple pieces, and then my brain immediately would go, ah! and then I would take a million points of unnecessary damage. This gets even worse once the boss of this area actually starts using these against you. Though I did eventually squeak past this boss, the memory of it did not exactly leave me, even though I've been trying to repress it to this very day. After Mr. Stone's defeat, thank God that's over, we find ourselves in Picture City, or as I like to call it, the staples down the road from my house. I guess in Rayman's world, areas just made up of school supplies are commonplace, which means I would never want to live here. Putting my bias towards colored pencils aside, this is this is actually one of my favorite stages in the game because it is harder than the previous stage, but it also brings back feelings of band land, making things feel really fair in the grand scheme of things, which, you know what, I can appreciate. And then Space Mama shows up for three whole boss fights, all with different mechanics, and I just gotta say, Space Mama is probably the MVP of Mr. Dark's forces because no one else tries that hard to kill Rayman. I think her third fight's actually the best boss encounter in the game because it is just loads of fun. And that is not a laundry machine pun, that was just a coincidence. Though that does get me thinking about Mario and Rabbids because there's actually a weird washing machine in that game too, and I'm wondering if that was like... Like a, like a, like a reference, maybe? But, you know, Ubisoft doesn't like Rayman anymore, so I doubt they would do that. And now, of course, comes the level that I've been dreading. It's the Cave of Scops, a stage with a really great name that's fun to say, uh, but is not a very fun stage to play. I've rhymed again. Someone stop me. Cave of Scops is home to the gigantic, evil, really, really mean scorpion, Mr. Scops, and he is just not very happy that Rayman is still alive. Following their first meeting, Rayman is put through literal hell to try and get to the end of this place, including very darkly lit maze-like areas that are only lit up by a little firefly that hangs out on Rayman's hand. I wish I never had to play this level again for the rest of my life. <laughs> I really hope you've been upgrading your health, my friend, because you're gonna need every last bit of health you have to survive this dingy, disgusting place and take on Mr. Scops, who, uh, probably took me around 45 minutes to kill the first time around, and yes, I never said I was good at video games, and this is proof. Costume change in the middle of the video? My goodness! After putting Mr. Scops in the ground, I just wanted to say his name one more time because it was fun, Rayman would typically enter Candy Chateau, but in Rayman Redemption there is a whole new world in the form of Playtopia. This place really reminds me of both Bandland and Picture City, and even has some non-copyrighted building blocks in the background to really just, you know, pull everything together. I actually love this level, except for when they try to make me do math. Or when they try to make me do math under dire circumstances like a giant ink flood or whatever that was supposed to be. Uh, oh, uh, uh, it's 24. Listen guys, I can't do math. I'm not a mather, but you know, if anyone was gonna teach me math and have it stick, it probably would be Rayman, so I do appreciate him at least trying. Other than that, I really don't like the very dark level where I need to find colored keys to open different doors, uh, but I'm, I'm a little sissy when it comes to stuff like that, so... Uh, I'm sure you'll have no problem with it. And finally, after all of that work, our hero Rayman makes it to his ultimate destination, Mr. Dark's Domain, which is apparently... Uh, Candyland, I guess. Nobody tell Hasbro or else he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Mr. Dark makes a really grand entrance here, and he starts off by destroying this little mini-boss guy that we've been fighting throughout the entire game. But you know what? His boss fights were actually kind of fun, despite the fact that he was trying to kill us. So, like... My new mission is clear. I need to avenge this little dark toon fella. I got you, man. As a general rule of thumb, I always love candy and food themed stages. I think they're just really unique and charming. But you know what? This stage is harder than a peppermint candy, so it might feel a little bit bittersweet when you get to the end of each objective because you know everything is just gonna keep getting harder as you go along. This, of course, culminates with Mr. Dark's Dare, in which he creates Bad Rayman, or Dark Rayman, or Raymasis, whatever you want to call him, all of the names are canon. But this guy isn't just here to stand there and look cool, he's gonna follow you throughout the entire stage just like a cosmic clone from Mario Galaxy 2, except 15 years before that. This guy's a little bit more serious though, because remember, we're playing Rayman, not Baby Mario game. Baby game for easy game baby gamers. I love Mario, I don't think it's a baby game. I'm just, I'm just trying to act tough for the camera. Even one handshake with Dark Rayman and you are toast. You're like disintegrated on a molecular level. Go back to the start of the stage. 
do not collect $200. What I like about these chase sections is it makes you use all of the skills and ideas that you've put into action throughout this entire game in a very quick paced little action-y bit. And plus, who doesn't like a good, like, light versus dark fight? Like, it's just, it's cool. It's thematic. Shut up. But once Rayman gets to the highest point of Candy Chateau, this is the point where I unfortunately broke. You see, you find Mr. Dark brooding in this room, holding the great protune, and he's just like, you know, if you need something done right, you do it yourself. So then he transforms into what I am now calling the Chimera. The Chimera is basically a twist on the traditional boss rush formula, where instead of fighting each boss one by one, we're instead gonna be fighting all of the bosses merged into one in various combos. You start off with a little Mr. Scops plus Mr. Stone, which makes it really difficult to actually deal damage. Then you got the weird green guy with some guns, which I think he might've just found somewhere. I don't think that was part of the Chimera thing. Buzz it and Mr. Scops again, that one's super easy. But then you get to Mr. Stone plus Mr. Sax, and that's the point where I was like, whoops, no matter how hard I try, I can't beat this because the lava rocks are here and I'm just apparently not very good at a bullet hell game. Now I gotta play more Toho. I've never even played, I don't even know if I said that right, I've never played one of those games ever and I never will. So needing to actually finish this game so I could talk about it, I unfortunately had to resort to the cheat code that gives me a bunch of extra health and I don't feel bad even a little bit because I put up with every single annoying thing in this game up to this point and I feel like I earned the right to see the end. But it's all about fun, so like, I had more fun actually finishing the game, so I don't have to justify myself, I don't know why I am. Following the Chimera encounter, you fight Mr. Dark a little bit, and that part of the fight's actually really fun, I think it's pretty fair. But after that, he runs away because he's a scared guy with a scared cry, and then you have to run back to the beginning of the game to fight him one more time in an epic final battle. The last battle with Mr. Dark is a really engaging affair. There's a whole bunch of spells being shot at you because he's using the great protune as a weapon. And unfortunately for him and all his spells, we don't actually need to learn about spelling because this isn't Rayman brain games. Mr. Dark is defeated, no more Mr. Dark, and Rayman is the champion of the universe. This cool guy. Gotta love them. And that is pretty much the entirety of Rayman 1. Redemption offers a couple more things like some extra bonus levels you can get by collecting magician tokens, but I didn't really feel like I wanted to play them just yet. Maybe I'll play them in the future, but for now, I've had my fill. I know a lot of people might say, hey, you should probably play the original version of a game before you ever play something like this. Like, let's say you're playing Half-Life 1 versus Black Mesa. But there are certain merits to experiencing the more modern portrayal of these things. But for someone who's looking to become a fan rather than who's already a returning fan, this is the better option because it's a lot more comfortable. I just want to say, if you're looking to get into Rayman or anything really, and there's a better alternative to the original, definitely check this out. Check out Rayman Redemption for sure. I'm terrible at ending videos. I hope you have a great day. And here's the outro segment where I'll say something funny right now after the video fades out and then back in. Something funny. See? You got exactly what was advertised. But wow, you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you made it this far, please let me know down in the comments because now you're in the secret club because, you know, some people don't make it here and that's just a sign of weakness. But if you like this video and you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell, follow my Twitter, and join the Discord to keep up with more Rayman and other things that aren't Rayman because I do a lot of things. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current supporters who are Noah Wizbios, Chaotic Mercenary, Brady Hilkemeyer, Jaden the Hedgehog, Kaido the Samurai, Danny Lee Dauber, Mike TGC, Mailman 019, Dax, T Bone APH, The Seven Superstars, Crystal, Ty Little Tech Guy, PM13, Chaos, Dork in a Hat, Mega Traffic Cone, and on Patreon, Noah Wizbios again, and John the Real Wawa Luigi. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to everyone in the $1 tier, because that also helps a lot and gets you access to special exclusive videos like footage of me playing this for the first time, and like a whole ton of old blooper videos that are also up there. If you're interested in that, you can make sure to go check out the card at the top of the screen for my Patreon, or the join button below, which gets you the same exact things and are both very much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.